I'm gonna put a little bit of distance in between us to see how we sound when we're both moving. All right, welcome back party people. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the Rode Wireless Go mic and hopefully we can give you enough information to help you make a decision on whether this wireless mic is right for you. The first thing we'll do is go through the technical specifications and talk a little bit about how this wireless mic works. Then we'll put it through some tests uh, as we do normally on this channel. We'll take the weight of it, we'll measure it. We will also take it out into the field and use it in a few different scenarios the first scenario will be with our Canon M50 mirrorless digital camera, which is actually recording me as I speak. And that scenario will test out how well it works when we have a subject being recorded and the recorder is actually moving and roving about. A scenario for me would be, for example, if I'm describing something on a bike or just describing a particular motion uh, that you need to be doing to learn a skill, and I have a third party that is videoing me from afar and then they may want to uh, come up close and roam around the bike and I need my hands free and I need that ease of movement to just kind of move around and tell things and still be able to capture that crisp audio. The second scenario will be using our GoPro Hero 8 with the media mod and in this scenario it's typical for me when I have like a follow cam for example maybe from the side or from the back or from the front we have another rider that has a camera pointed toward me so both subjects are moving both the recorder and the the object being recorded are both moving so we'll test how well the audio is captured when both the person being recorded and the recorder are actually in motion so in our third scenario, we're going to test using the iPhone 11. Uh, so a lot of times uh, when we don't have our action camera with us or our digital camera, we almost always have our phone with us and sometimes we want to capture the action. So how well does it capture audio using an iPhone? We'll test that out as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the technical specifications. So when you open the box, the first thing you'll notice is you'll get both a receiver and a transmitter and really the best way to tell the difference between the transmitter and the receiver is to look at the inputs the, the transmitter actually has a built-in microphone on the top and also it has a little mic symbol here where you can plug in a uh, lapel mic or lavalier mic the receiver on the other hand has a 3.5 millimeter jack in order to plug into your uh, recording source like your camera or your gopro and it has a digital screen on it as well. All right, so in general, the way the wireless microphones work, you have a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter is what you wear on your belt. You can clip this to your belt, or if you're using the internal microphone built into the transmitter, you can clip this to your shirt as well. As you speak, the pressure of the sound waves will be captured on the diaphragm of this microphone, creating an analog waveform that is digitally converted using an AD converter built inside the transmitter. It is then encrypted using 128-bit technology and transmitted over a 2.4 gigahertz point-to-point -point link. And the receiver actually receives that information, the zeros and ones that are encrypted. It unencrypts it, converts it back to an analog waveform using the same AD converter, just a reverse process and that waveform is then relayed to the receiving source like your camera, your GoPro, or your iPhone. The communication between the transmitter and the receiver is a point-to-point -point connection. It only works point-to-point, -point, so one transmitter to one receiver. Now, you can have multiple transmitters and receivers working in the same area. For example, if you had you know, a lot of people that were um, recording in the same area like a studio, you could have up to eight of these recording at the same time, but they each individually would have a pair of transmitters and receivers. Both the transmitter and receiver are charged using a USB-C port located on the side, and Rode says that these devices can last up to seven hours on a full charge. Rode says the maximum distance uh, between the transmitter and the receiver is 70 meters, which is about 229, 230 feet. 
Uh, we're going to go out in the field and test that out today. I will also note that this is a point-to-point -point communication. That means line of sight is very important here. So having a direct link between the recorded object and the person that is recording uh, free of objects in between is going to be crucial here. All right, so this is a close-up of the transmitter. You can see the built-in omnidirectional mic on the top along with the battery level indicator and if the transmitter is actually linked to the receiver. It has a port here for a uh, microphone, external microphone, and a clip on the back here that can be used to clip this to your belt or to a shirt. And we can see the power button down here on the bottom of the transmitter. And if we take a look at the receiver close up, you can see the output attenuation button on the bottom there and the power button on the top. And we have our digital display. And if we press the power button for three seconds, we'll get a display here. I'm gonna power on the transmitter as well and link the two together. So back here on the receiver screen, you can see as I talk into the mic here, you can see the little meter in the middle. Also, you can see the battery indicator of the transmitter here and the battery level of the receiver here, as well as this the link signal between the transmitter and the receiver. And then you have your output pad or attenuator triangle level meter here. You have three settings there, either zero dB, minus six dB or minus 12 dB of pad. All right, Road says that both units weigh 31 grams a piece. So let's put these on the scale just to verify. All right, so our receiver weighs in at 32 grams. Now we have our transmitter on and the transmitter weighs 31 grams, which is exactly what Road stated. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the dimensions of both the transmitter and receiver. They are the exact same size if you put them face to face here. And uh, we're talking 44 millimeters across by 44 millimeters length. Thickness is about 13 millimeters for the casing. And if you include the clip, it's about probably about 18 millimeters wide including the largest part of the clip on the back all right so let's go through a scenario of setting up your camera system to work with the rode wireless go mic so first get your transmitter in this scenario i'm going to plug my lavalier mic into the mic port of the transmitter and i'm going to clip the transmitter onto my pants as such i'm going to clip lavalier mic onto my shirt we're going to take the receiver and we're going to put the clip of the receiver into the shoe of our camera we're just going to slide right in the shoe there and then we're going to take our cable and connect the receiver to our camera and the port is located on the side of the receiver find your camera input connect those two together. So what you want to do now is press the power button on the transmitter and the power button on the receiver and hold it for three seconds. And notice that the power button on the transmitter is actually on the bottom here. So it makes it easier for you to press this button as you have it clipped onto your belt loop or your the waist of your pants here. So I'm gonna press both of these on and you'll notice our blue lights come on the transmitter our LCD screen is actually active on the receiver here. And you can see as I type talk into the microphone, you can see the meter go up and down on the receiver. And that is basically how you set up the transmitter and receiver to work with your camera system. All right, so even though I have the mic on, I don't actually have it plugged in to the camera. So I'm gonna show you what the audio sounds like close up and we're gonna walk back so I'm about almost 12 feet, so 11 feet, 11 inches, and 13 sixteenths. So this is what it sounds like in my normal voice without the Rode mic plugged in. Now let's do the same with the Rode mic plugged in. So now I have the receiver plugged into the shoe of my M50 digital camera, and I have my belt, the transmitter on my belt clip, 
and I have this Sony lavalier mic that is clipped to my shirt. I'm not trying to hide it right now, but we're gonna go back from the same distance and see how it sounds. So we'll back out over here and we're somewhere around 12 feet away from the camera and I'm talking in my normal voice and I'm gonna walk back up to the camera. All right, so we're out here in this field and we're gonna do our line to sight test. And from this point where we're standing at, all the way over to the black fence on the other side over there, straight across, is just over 210 feet. The max line of sight is 70 meters for this particular wireless mic. So we're not quite on the edge there, but uh, this should give us a good test. I'm just gonna ride out and talk and come back and that'll give you a comparison of how much the audio degrades from this fence line at 100 feet, at 200 feet, and then I'll ride back and we'll swap it out with the Road Go mic and we'll give it another shot. All right, so that's our 100 foot mark right there where the gloves are on the ground. And that's our 210 foot mark, the fence. This is just with a regular Road Go video mic on top of a Canon M50 mirrorless camera. We're gonna make our way out to mark out in the field and I'm just gonna be talking as we go out there. Today we're doing a on the wireless mic and give it a shot and we're going to do a similar test where we ride out and i'm just going to continuously talk and then on the way back i'm going to ride on the other side of some of those uh, playground equipment so hopefully we break line to sight and see how that affects the audio welcome back party people today we're doing a road wireless mic test and i have the transmitter clipped to my pants and i have a to my shirt. And right here, we are at 100 feet away from our camera. And I'm waving at the camera right now, talking to the camera. And that's at the 100 foot mark. Now I'm gonna ride to the 200 foot mark. So my second mark is right by this tree line here, which will be 200 feet. And I will just continuously talk so this is about the foot mark here. This is my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson in primer gray. And today we're talking about Rode wireless mic. Now I can move even further. And this is about 15 feet. Probably just a little bit more than 215 feet. But um, here you can see this is my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson in primer gray. So now I'm going to work my way back toward the camera over by some of this equipment and hopefully we can break the line of sight and I'm just going to keep talking normally here and I go behind some of this equipment I'm still talking. How is my audio? Test, test, test. This is my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson in primer gray. And we keep testing. And we test a little bit more. And we're just going through. And we're going to here. Be completely blocked out now. And this is my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson in primer gray. So that was a 100 foot, 200 foot, and 210 foot test with some obstacles in between on the way back. All right, so I still got the mic enabled. So you can see that the transmitter is actually on the front of my pocket. So as I rode out in the field, 
you could hear the audio breaking up because there wasn't direct line of sight from the transmitter back to the receiver on the camera. But if you want to film somebody riding away from you, obviously put the a receiver on the back of your pants so the receiver has line of sight. It did pretty good uh, as long as I wasn't pointed out toward that way away from the line of sight of the camera. Each time I stopped at both the 100 foot and the 200 foot mark, uh, the audio was crystal clear so that was pretty good and then we even went out to 210 feet and it sounded like I, I was pretty much right here at the camera so I then rode over toward the playground equipment over this way and tried to block it out a little bit over there and it did cut out a few times but even being behind some of that uh, playground equipment it still didn't cut out that much so uh, a pretty good quality from that distance and from those particular obstacles blocking it. The next scenario we're going to do is we're going to use our GoPro Hero 8 with the media mod on it and this time what we're going to try to do is uh, more of a follow cam action footage where we have one rider uh, riding in parallel beside the other rider and kind of filming so both the camera and the object being recorded is in motion and I'll give you an idea about how that audio sounds on the GoPro. I've got my receiver connected into the media mod port here and I've got my transmitter on my side. All right, party people, this is my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson, and I'm riding aside a 2020 Trek Marlin 6, and we're just riding across the field. I'm going to put a little bit of distance in between us to see how we sound when we're both moving. And here we go. We're almost to the end here, and I'm coming back toward the videographer. All right, one more time. All right, I'm gonna to try to put a little bit more distance in between us. Here we go. This is my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson in primer gray. And we're probably about 70 feet apart. And I'm coming closer now. And here we go. All right, so we are back at the house now. And as we were about to do the iPhone test, uh, we found out that the particular splitter cable that we have does not work with the mic audio channel. So uh, this may be some good uh, lessons learned here for somebody else who's trying to connect the iPhone to the Rode Wireless Go mics. There's two things you need to know. First of all, the iPhone and similar smartphones use a tip ring ring sleeve jack and I'll bring you in a little bit closer to show you what that is but you're definitely going to need this cable which I had already had. The problem is is that this splitter cable here that I have that splits from lightning to 3.5 millimeter I don't think it's wired up to have that additional that additional ring connection that I need so this does not work so just note if you have some of these splitters like this that may be a potential source of problem if you're trying to get your wireless go to work with the iPhone and you're definitely going to need this cable this is something I didn't talk about but this is a, a patch cable a 3.5 millimeter tip ring sleeve which is the black side here to a 3.5 millimeter male tip ring ring sleeve and you need this adapter cable for the Rode Wireless Go to work with iPhone and similar uh, smartphones. Since this cable does not work for me and I have no way of obtaining a new one anytime soon, I am going to use my iPad. And my iPad has the old 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on it. So I should be able to use this patch cable plug directly into the iPad and test out the wireless go mic using the iPad. Now, so I'm going to bring the shot in tight so we can get a close up of this cable and the uh, connectors on both ends. All right, so notice the black end here. This has a tip and then in between the two black marks is a ring and then in between the actual insulator and the first ring is the sleeve. So this is a tip ring sleeve connection. And if you notice the gray end, which would be the end that connects into the iPhone, has a tip ring, a second ring, and then a sleeve. And that sleeve, I believe, in this particular standard is the 
audio connection for the mic. So basically this cable is converting the TRRS signal to the TRS signal and you need this cable in order for the Rode Wireless Go to work with the iPhone and any other smartphone that has a TRRS jack. Two pieces of advice, make sure you have this cable, which I had already had, and make sure that any type of lightning to female jack that you have, this particular one, I don't know why it doesn't work, but I've tried it on two different iPhones now. So I don't think it is TRRS compatible in this female jack here. I think it's TRS, and that's why we're not getting the proper uh, audio signal from the mic. So I'm gonna throw this out, and we're gonna connect this directly into our iPad. All right, so I have my iPad here, and it has the traditional 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on it. So there's not a lot you have to do here. Just make sure you have the appropriate cable that we talked about. The black end goes into the road. The gray end goes into the actual smartphone or iPad in my case. I'm just gonna plug the gray end in and we'll plug the black end into the road receiver like such. All right, so we've got the road plugged in to our iPad and I have the transmitter on my side and I have the microphone clipped inside my shirt here, so the Sony lavalier. And uh, we'll go out and do some tests. Here we are testing with the iPad and the Rode Wireless Go. And I'm just gonna ride down to the end of the road here and stop and we'll have a chat and I'll ride back. As I mentioned before, we had a little problem when we first started testing we had uh, one of our uh, lightning to 3.55 millimeter jacks was not uh, TRS compatible, TRRS compatible. So, all right, I'm gonna stop. As pants because I'm so I'm gonna put it back on the side here, and we'll continue talking. This is my 2019. Santa Cruz Bronson in primer gray, and I'm just talking in my normal audio voice right now. Test, 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 one, two, three. And uh, now I'm gonna ride back toward the video source up here and see how it works out. So, all right, so we're gonna ride, gonna ride back toward our camera. Keep on riding. This is my Santa Cruz Bronson. V3 in primer gray. All right, we're coming back to the camera. All right, that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Share the link with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that post notification bell to get notified of all new uploads. Until next time, skill up and ride. Van up and go.